Okay, I'm back here. You can see I'm about ready to drop the intake on here. Uh, I got my shop back here, ready. I've already I've already done it, but and my brake clean, trusty old brake clean here. What I've done <clears throat> vacuumed inside of there everything. You can see I pulled my rag out and I wiped everything down. I brake cleaned the china walls. Everything as clean, clean, clean as I can possibly get it. That's the key to the success in all of this is cleanliness. Any little speck in there is going to make it down into the oil. And the oil filter might not catch it. So I'm almost ready here to set the intake. But before I did that, I wanted to show something. One of the little quirks I've come across a lot. And it's mostly on Fords, but I have come across it with the Chevys. Here's the gaskets, the intake gaskets. And of course, they're, they only go on one way. Let me see if I can get this set here for the camera for you. It'll say on here, right here. Right there, head side. So you know which way they go on. That part is pretty much idiot proof. Get back up here. Oh, four wheel drives. I love them. I always test fit them on Ford here because of this. They got these little clips, guides right here on both sides of the gasket. And if you notice, Right here, the head gasket sticks out a little. Makes like a little tab for that to fit on. Uh, oh. This is hard to do with the camera. There, there she goes. Always test fit them. You can see they're, they're in the tab there and it's set right where it needs to be. Now your gasket might leave a little like that. That's okay, these heads haven't been port matched or gasket matched. But always check. I can feel right there where the gasket is actually this way, just a little bit. Check all your ports. Some of these I've seen where your gasket is actually because of the the tab down here it'll actually push the gasket clear over here blocking off your intakes so little trick on Fords uh, like I said they're the most common that I've come across always make sure your gasket fits in there nice sometimes you gotta trim this just a little bit put a little ping in it there to trim out that gasket part and slide that over. Some of them are really bad. Some of them are really, really bad. And the way you can tell immediately if you screwed up, when you're bolting down your intake, I always start my bolts by hand and I run them in. I, I never use an electric or an air to run down my bolts always ratchet them down. If you feel something kind of fighting you a little bit, it's usually the gasket inside the threads and the gasket should not be anywhere near your threads. So if you feel something kind of biting and holding you back as you're tightening them down, stop. Un take it back off and reset your gasket because that's probably what's happened is 
it's shifted like that. You see, it, all it's got to do is move that much, and it's going to interfere right there with the bolt, and that'll tell me, oh, whoa, I messed up. So always, always check that. And like I said, your final is when you're screwing them bolts in, if you feel it, and if you do it by hand, you'll be able to feel it. And if you feel that bite near anything funny on the threads as it's going in, stop and start over. Pull it, pull the intake back off and check it because that's, that's real crucial. It'll either cause a leak or you'll plug off one side of the motor more than the other and it, it won't run right. So, little tip there to kind of help you. <clears throat> so, anyway, you can see here how far I've gotten or haven't gotten. <laughs> no, this stuff takes a while. But, just little tricks like that. Keep everything clean. Make sure all your gaskets are set and set right. Never rely on those tabs to put you in the right spot. Always hand check them and feel them and try to do everything by hand because your fingers will tell you if there's something bad going on. Um, an impact or an electric ratchet, they won't. You won't feel it. So, little tricks to try to help you out there. And, uh, well, <laughs> I'm going to keep throwing on this here and get this on there. Uh, I'll be doing regular updates here on, on this as well. Okay, hope that helps. Another really super short quickie. This has got to be a quickie because I'm under the clock here now because I've already laid it. You can see I got a bead of silicone going across the chitin wells and a little daub coming up to the gasket. That's how you do it. You take the old ones that came in the gasket kit and you throw them away because that is the biggest leak parts in these things is those China rail gaskets that everybody puts in and they don't work. So always just use the, oh, I got a, the fancy one here, but just that right there. Or you can use the Ultra Gray. That works really good as well. But anyway, never ever use those gaskets that come in the kit. <sighs> oh man, I hate four wheel drives. I'm up here balancing, <laughs> trying to do this. Anyway, little kid right there, little help you out. Never ever use those gaskets. Always, always the um, silicone bead. That works. Okay? Well, back to work. Here's a good camera angle. I can give you an idea here. Wow, this is hard to do with the camera. See, I just dropped my bolts in. Oh yeah, and always re clean up your bolts too. I got a solvent tank over here. Um, you can use gasoline for that. Um, diesel. Personally, I don't like diesel because it leaves an oil film. Uh, my solvent tank, it's basically mineral spirits or think of it as non-flammable, non-exploding flammable gas. <laughs> That's the easiest way to describe a cleaning solvent. But uh, if you don't, just get a little pail of gas, drop them in it, um, clean them up that way. And use your noodle. It's gas, you know. Don't, you know, be careful if you're using gas. Uh, if you blow yourself up, don't blame me. But in a pinch, you can do it that way. Uh, but back on how to check, see if your uh, gasket is fitted right. Drop it in the hole. Turn them in by hand. I don't feel anything there and it's just easy going. 
just like that all the way in. That tells me that that gasket is right where it needs to be. It's not touching the threads anywhere. Little tricks like that just help you get a better result in the end. Okay, so that's it for that. Oh, another little handy little tip. When you're in no rallies or auto zone or wherever it is you buy your auto parts, pick you up one of these. It works great for lifting a motor. You don't have to worry about chains and that. Um, I throw a little painter's tape, the you know, the cheap blue stuff, down over it and then I put that on. That seals it and this locks it so it's all on there. And when I went to go put the intake on, it makes a nice little handle. You can bring it down nice and level. These things are wonderful for a lot more than just pulling motors. So grab one, grab two, put them on your shelf. These are a very handy tool, and you'll find uses for them other than pulling motors. Like I said, right, I was using it to seal the motor. Now I'm using it to install the intake. Makes it so easy. So, little tip right there. Okay, back to work. She's coming, Jimmy. She's a coming. Okay, I'm going to try this. I got the camera kind of propped up there. I'll give this a try. When it comes to setting your torques, I use my ratchet, but I turn it like this. When I'm first setting these down, I don't want, I want equal low down on it. So I'll turn my ratchet like this and I'll hold it like this, like a speedy wrench. And I'll just get them started like that. That's good. And I know I should be going center out, but I'm just barely starting. Like I said, to the first. That one I should have run in a little farther. I was hurrying. But it'll be alright. Just like that. I'm barely putting any torque on them. I'll go to the inside where I probably should have started all of this. And like I said, I'm only putting maybe 5-10 pounds on them is all. I'm just getting them started. Then I'll break out the torque wrench. See, right now I can use it as a speedy wrench. On these aluminum intakes, your torque is crucial on them. Otherwise, they'll warp, they'll move, they'll do all kinds of bad stuff for you. See, that one moved a little. And again, these are just initial setting torques. Sometimes I'll even break out my stubby ratchet for this because I know I can't get a lot of torque on that. And yes, I am doing this backwards, but it's just the initial. Okay, now I'll break out my torque wrench. So, there's a little tidbit on how to do this. How to use one of these. Uh, my shop, so it's Pittsburgh. Actually, I bought this one because it feels really close to my dad's snap-on. And I, actually, I, the only one I ever broke was the one that I broke because it should have broke. <laughs> Put way too much torque on it and I broke the ratchet in it. But I got a new one, just drop it on the shelf, they give you another one. Uh, I'm a big fan of Harbor Freight because of that. But anyway, that's how you can use this 
has a speedy speedy wrench and you hold it like that and you get very little torque you can go to like 10 pounds 10 12 pounds torque just by feeling it okay another little tip there for you I'll grab the torque wrench and then break out the torque sequence for this okay another one real quick here what I've done this is how I do my torque sequences and I set my torque I looked up the torque sequence from the back of the motor it's 5191137 the other side 6412128 they're all set at 25 pounds okay so I took little pieces of tape I wrote down all the numbers all the way to 12 I'll start here with uh, I'll start on this side it looks easier 6 is the back one I'll come over here that's number six I'll stick it on there like that okay then I put all my tape marks little slips of tape I'll put them all the way around that way I don't have to keep looking back at the torque sequence another little tip there that helps uh, speed things up and make sure you're right on your torques and there is a reason that they do the sequence that way the aluminum and the cast iron mesh and everything goes down nice equal everything blah 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 you know all the rules okay I'm gonna set this and forget it there's another tip get back to work okay I've already run all all of them down but this last one and I got I thought about it midway as I was going through all of this nobody's ever showed how to use a torque wrench I'm going to show you the way my dad taught me and uh, it might help you. Uh, right now I'm using uh, the Quinn Digital. Actually it's it's been pretty good. I've had it um, calibrated or checked a couple of times and it's, it's actually very very accurate. So well this is a four-wheel drive Give me a second here that I can climb this frickin' mountain again to come up here and I'll, I'll show you how I do my torques. Ugh. Good God, I'm too old for this. <laughs> okay, number 12. I got it marked all here with my tape so I don't forget my sequence. Uh, I've been called anal about all of that but I've never had problems so I don't know call it what you will anyway remember when I was showing you how to use it as a speed wrench well now you come all the way to the end and you don't jerk it it's just real smooth oh and another thing this is an electric one always make sure it's on some of them, uh, my dad's uh, blue point or a, no, it's a snap-on. If you uh, set it down, you haven't used it, and you pick it up because you you know you're you you got to move something, you got to do something. Sometimes you'll pick it up and it's turned off, and you start pulling on it, uh, you'll over torque because of the damn thing turned off. So always watch that on an electric one. Usually I have a clicker. <laughs> But I left it in the trunk of my wife's car because I had to change a tire on it. So I'm, I'm using this one today. Anyway, back to how to do this. Easy, easy pressure. Hold down on it. Easy, continuous pressure. That's it. When this one beeps and flashes, it's done. Now I know I'm done. Never jerk on it don't get in a hurry don't you know especially with a clicker because a clicker will give you a definite dead point stop I see a lot of guys you know click 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 take your time on it it's not a race the race is endurance you want the thing to last you don't want it to leak you don't want it to warp so just take your time a little bit 
and get the feel of the torque wrench. Like I said, nice easy pulls. Also, I know on this one, this is a bad example, but try not to use extensions. Every extension, every piece I put on here, you can see I got a deep socket. I do that to get a more true torque. Um, swivels, uh, anything like that you add to your torque wrench, it actually cuts back on your torque uh, accuracy. So always, there are situations you got to, but you know, always try to make it, in an ideal world, it would just be a socket to your torque wrench. None of this stuff. But, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, wobble socket or extensions, try not to use those. Uh, again, sometimes you have to, but uh, those are the worst. Um, you'll get, you'll be off a pound or two, sometimes five pounds with a wobble socket. Or, <laughs> I keep saying that, wobble extension. Uh, so, anyway, get a feel for your torque wrench. Even though it's all done, I'm going to go back and check them again. Oh, I've been talking, so i got to look. See? There, it turned itself off. I was talking too long. And always check it when it turns back on to make sure it hasn't changed. You can see i got it set at 25 pounds, if you can see that. If I would have just went ahead right there, I would have over-torqued because it wouldn't have beeped. Again, that's why I like a clicker, but the wife's got my clicker in her car. Here we go. Easy pull. There. I got a little on it because it's all, I only ran that sequence once. Here's number two. There. Number three. Nice, easy, gentle pulls. Three. Four. Is that right here? Five. Is right here. That one was good. Try number six. Right here. Number seven, right here. Usually your end ones will stay. Oh, this one had a little bit. Eight, nine is right there. And it's always your center ones that are the worst. And every torque wrench is different. Learn your torque wrench. And if I could have, I would have been using my clicker right here, but. 12. Now I'll go back to one again. She's good. Two. It looks like I'm pulling really hard, but I'm not. I'm just, just enough to make it move. Three. This is hard to do when you're on a balancing act because it's a four-wheel drive. It's a lot easier to do when it's on a stand.
Always put my hand on top. Always out here. Easy, equal pressure. I got a little bit out of that one. Go back to one again. A little. Four. Where's number five? All the way in the back. This one's probably good. Oh yeah, legs are cramping. Doesn't help matters much that it's 500 million degrees in here right now. I think I'll call it good after this one. Nine. Okay, what I did there is I was checking for squish out. Um, on a Chevy, you'll see it because of the intake design. Uh, remember, I didn't put gaskets there. I never do. It's always that. But I'll run my finger over to check for squish. Okay, I know that intake set because it squished all the way around evenly. Uh, of course, on a Ford, you can't really check underneath the thermostat housing. That's another story. You just, if you get a good squish around the distributor, you know, you're, uh, the distributor hole, you're generally pretty good. And check also any place it does. Okay, another trick. Uh, this will probably, I'll probably edit this into another one because this is already 10 minutes long. But you notice, I got RTB on my hands. And if you've worked around silicone, you know it's nasty. It's just gross. It gets all over everything. But here's something uh, to know about RTB. It even says it on the can now. Uh, let me get down. Uh. Jimmy, your Jeep sucks. Ugh. All right. Ugh. Sweating like a horn church. Yeah, I probably got it on my phone now, too. You can see I got RTV on my hands. It says on the label, don't use it anywhere. Kind of, uh, where it can come into contact with uh, gasoline. Well, I've heard a lot of people, and I've seen a hundred times. I don't know why I keep seeing it, but I see it. People will put RTV down on a carburetor gasket or a throttle body gasket or something to, to help seal it. They're fighting a vacuum leak. So you, if you see this, where's my lens? If you see smudges of RTV on there, you know immediately to take that off and clean it. This is why. You remember my solvent tank here, which is basically, watch me drop it in the solvent here, that'll be good. It's basically non-flammable gas. This is why you never use AT, RTV or any silicone anywhere that it comes in contact with gas. Gas gets on there, runs through it, 
You're hauling ass down the freeway, having fun, yeah, fuel's going through it, and it's gone. It disappears. Gas eats this stuff, uh, so don't put that on anything that any kind of fuel goes by. It just, it'll open it up, you'll vacuum leak, it'll suck the particles down through your intake, and it, it's just nasty. Don't do it. And if you're looking at a car or something, uh, and you see a smudge of RTV right around the intake, take it off. Uh, just put it in your head immediately. Take it off, go to the auto parts store and get you another gasket if you have to. In fact, do, because that one's contaminated now. Get that off and put another one on it. Never RTV or silicone anywhere there's gas. Okay? Hope that helps. I'm going to get back to work on her here. Yeah, you can tell I'm in the dirt and the grime so I don't have my teeth in. <laughs> because I, I wipe my mouth or something like that. I got I, I, My hands always got this stuff on them and other stuff. It just, bleh. Okay, back to work.